Now, if you use the app on a real device, you'd have seen it crashes when you go into the detail view controller enough times. For me, on my iPhone XS Max, after two or three view controller views, the whole app crashes. In fact, I get a massive iPhone reboot, a very serious crash indeed. Now, there are two reasons for this, one correlated and one not. For the one that isn't correlated, well, you've seen that already. We're loading very, very large images here, 4,000 by 4,000 pixels. But there's something else subtle here, and it's something we haven't covered yet, so this is the perfect time. Let's look in Image View Controller. That's our Detail View Controller. And look at the way we load images inside View Did Load. We use UI Image Named, the image name, and then Force Unwrap It. Now, when you create a UI image using this named initializer, iOS loads the image and puts it into an image cache for reuse later. This is often extremely helpful, particularly if you know the image will be used again and again. But if you know it's unlikely to be reused, or if it's quite large, then don't bother putting it into the cache. It'll just add memory pressure to your app and probably flush out more useful images. In our case, how likely is it that users will go back and forth to the same image again and again? Answer, not likely at all. So we can skip the image cache by creating our images using the UI image contents of file initializer instead. This isn't as friendly as UI image named because you have to specify the exact path to an image rather than just its file name in your app bundle. But reading the path for a resource is almost the same as reading the URL for a resource, which you've done before. I replace this code with let's path equals bundle dot main dot path for resource. For our file name, I'm going to use our image name like that. And for the type, I'll specify nil. And I will keep the force unwrap because we know it's inside our bundle. That's the point of this application. And now for making the UI image here, we'll replace named image with UI image contents of file that path that we just made. And a lot of force unwrap at the end. Again, so we know it's inside the bundle. In practice, you probably have some guards around this, but it's fine. We're just testing out here. Let's now take a look at one more problem. This time, quite subtle. Loading the images was slow because they were so big, and iOS was caching them unnecessarily. But UI images cache is actually intelligent. If it senses memory pressure, i.e. if it realizes we're getting rather tight on RAM, it automatically clears itself to make room for other stuff. So why does our app run out of memory? To find out, I'll press Command-I to run Instruments again. Please keep the Allocations instrument chosen, then press Choose, then press Record. And we'll go back in here. And here's our usual app. I'm going to scroll around a little bit, then choose RTFM, and then go back, then choose BRB, and go back, and now BTW. And let's do one more, OMG. Okay, so that's our run. We'll look at four different screens there. I'll press stop. And down in the instrument detail box, I'm gonna search for our image view controller, the one that shows the detail area. So I'll type in here, image view controller, like that. And you'll see up here, I make it slightly larger, Project 30 Image View Controllers, Persistent 4. That means four were made and never destroyed. What that means is the image it was showing also hasn't been destroyed, hence the massive memory use. And that's being visualized up here. You can see this ramp getting higher and higher and higher. And look, we're using almost a gig of RAM by this point. But here we're using 1.3 gigs of RAM just for this very, very simple application. Now, what's causing the image view controller to never be destroyed? Let's have a look. I will uh, close instruments again, head back to Xcode, and let's look for where we are showing the uh, detail view. Oh, yeah, in selection view controller, here we go. Uh, there's self row at. Let's scroll down and find did select row at. You can see here, 
This has some sort of view controller's cache that appends a new view controller before showing it. This cache is never actually used. If I search for view controllers, I'll do command C and then command F for that thing. We have it being appended there and being declared there. And that's it, append and declare. Never actually read the things we append. That's going into the array and never coming out again. Second, our image view controller over here, this has a property called selection view controller, which is declared strongly. It strongly owns its parent. So let's try and fix these problems. For the view controllers array, it's easy enough. This is silly, it shouldn't even be there. I'll delete those lines of code and then delete the property up here. This uh, view controller's cache, like that. Then over a selection view controller at Swift, uh, or an image view controller at Swift, we're going to go ahead and make this uh, selection view controller property weak. So we weakly own the thing that created us. And that breaks our strong reference cycle. So with those changes, I'll press Command I again to see if it's fixed our memory problem. Let's find out. I'll press Allocations and go for Choose. Press Record. Bring up Simulator. Uh, there's IDK. And then Back, IRL. Then Back, then WTF and back, and LMAO. There we go. Okay, and stop. So that's our new run. And again, in the instrument detail, I'm gonna go ahead and search for image view controller. And we can still see right here, four persistent image view controllers. They're still not being destroyed. That means those two problems were either red herrings or themselves weren't enough to solve the problem because something far more sneaky is happening. The problem actually comes about because in our code, in imagery control at Swift, we have uh, here, this line of code inside load view. Now, this view we have, this zoomed in detail view, makes a very, very simple animation. Every five seconds on a, a, a timer, it makes the image view have its entity transform, so full size, regular rotation, and animate it down over three seconds to be smaller. So it kind of pulsates in a strange way. Now this timer does a hacky animation on the image, and it could easily be replaced with better animations as done inside Project 15. But even so, why should that cause the image view controllers to never be destroyed? Well, the reason is, when you provide code for your timer to run, the timer holds a strong reference to it, so it can definitely be called when the timer is up. We're using self inside our timer's code, which means our view controller owns a timer. This thing here is a property in the view controller. Here it is. So the view controller owns a timer. And now the timer owns the view controller because we have self strongly captured inside the timer's closure. There are several solutions here. We could use a weak self for the closure. We could rewrite the code using smarter animations, or we could destroy a timer when it's no longer needed, thus breaking the cycle. In this case, I'm gonna go with destroying the timer because it gives you some practice with invalidating timers. So right now we have methods for load view, view did load, and view did appear. Below view did appear, I'm going to add view will disappear. Then we'll say super dot view will disappear, animated, and then anim timer dot invalidate. Destroy the timer now. And remember, calling invalidate on a timer stops it immediately, which also forces it to release its strong reference on the view controller it belongs to, thus breaking the strong reference cycle. So now, if I press Command I to profile one last time, we should see everything is now working correctly. I'll press record, go into the simulator, choose BRB. There is our image view controller, persistent one. I'll go back, it's now destroyed, BTW. There's persistent one again, now transient one, that's the previous one, and back, away it goes, 
and we'll do OMG, Persistent 1, Transient 2. So as it goes away correctly, when you press back, it is now being destroyed as you would expect. That being said, the app might still crash sometimes because despite our best efforts, we're still juggling pictures that are far too big. However, the code is at least a great deal more efficient now and none of the problems were that hard to find.